from what I can tell, tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, there's three songs on that first Baby Shambles, al- Baby Shambles album that you co-wrote. Is that right? Um, so you got there's there was um, Forever, Pipe Down, yeah. Loyalty Song, Eight Dead Boys. I got little bits on uh, 30 Second and In Love With A Feeling. And I was up the morning I wrote as well. Songs I would say, I mean, I had, I had input on, uh, I can't, a lot of this I can't remember, do you know what I mean? Hmm. But I, I definitely know we're kind of like, we worked, there were songs I'd say that me and him wrote together was, like Eight Dead uh, was Forever, obviously, uh, uh, Pipe Down, uh, Up The Morning, um, a loyalty song. Eight Dead Boys was one I kind of had, already kind of I brought to him there was kind of not brought to him you know what I mean there was kind of already formed but he added a, he added the riff at the beginning stuff like that so yeah if you go kind of in a bit of a list order like I remember something I have yeah these weren't done like uh, oh, let's go Pete let's have a songwriter at <laughs> 3 o'clock on Tuesday mate do you know what I mean it would never happen like that it was like just, just sort of like got vomited out so I don't know I can have I have vague memories of certain, how certain things transpired, but some I don't as well. So yeah, I, I do the best I can. No, yeah, just like whatever, whatever <laughs> comes to mind, really. Like, um, is there a bit of a story behind Forever that we didn't discuss before? Uh, well, the thing I remember that that song is, and this is generally what happened with stuff with Peter. I, I remember, which is why I think it works for because I would be playing the guitar and just like. Uh, something like that and, and and I'd be playing around and I'd be playing guitar and and he'd go I like that and he'd just jump on it and I, if he didn't say that I would have just never played it again or not never I just wouldn't have thought anything of it do you know what I mean hmm. uh, only by his catalyst he was a catalyst really for, for going to jump on that and then it would happen really quick after that so I needed that which was that's what happened with Man Who Came to Stay I had that riff he's like that's what and then it was just there was, there was he had his bit to it and it was a song so um, that was generally how it went, and I remember I had the, I had I had this that that thing. It's really simple, it's just simple. And I'd been playing it for a couple of days, so I think I played it to him, and he's like, and he just jumped on it and really liked it. Now I, I vaguely remember. This sounds a bit weird, but I've there's a I remember pl- like uh, being like at three in the morning in a graveyard in Old Street in one of the church graveyard with him, and we were just been up for a couple of days. It was horrendous. And uh, I remember writing it in there with him. I don't, I don't know if that's my memory's warped or it was partly written there. And then, because I do remember after that, thinking this is really weird. And then walking up to the cafe in the morning, I opened at 6.30 in Hoxton with him. And that's, and then, and then I remember we, that's, that's my memory of that song being written. Yes. And obviously became, <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember Carl mentioned the graveyard thing. So I was hoping that story would come out. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'd be interested if Pete remembers that as well. Maybe it wasn't all fully worked in there, but I do remember being in there and just and him. I remember just Pete come up with the lyric that that lyric. And looking back, it's quite funny, isn't it? Like it's just in a graveyard in Old Street, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, uh, in top, you know, whatever. But yeah, it was there. It was there. It was. It was pretty. Yeah, um, yeah. With all the um, being up for a couple of days and all the edginess and. Anxiety and paranoia and not really getting along energy. <laughs> yeah, did you feel that obviously became like one of the biggest songs? Um, did you feel like it was going to be a, be a big song at the time when you wrote it? I thought it was quite anthemic. Someone, and lots of people really liked it. A lot of people thought that as well. A couple of people were like, just sounds they were just like uh, in the early days. Yeah, I thought that. I didn't really give a shit what other people thought. They're like, sounds like Strokes or something like that, which I don't think it did sound like Strokes. It's because it's got that thing in it. Which is the strokes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. right, okay. It's just a, it's just a chord. It's just the, the, the sorry, not even. It's just the, the way you're playing the, the riff. It's just two notes. It's just like it's a skeleton of a chord. Um, that sound, but um, yeah, because when we wrote it, and by the time we recorded it, I did have a feeling it was going to do quite well because also the response it got from gigs was fucking crazy. Mm. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I remember off at the end. Well, it was kicked off throughout the whole gigs, those early gigs, but it, it, it was pretty raucous. People really liked it. And it did have a bit of hype behind it. I remember there was all these, not you give a shit, but there was loads of articles being written saying, oh, this is like anthem- anthemic and what have you. I remember um, Zane Lowe recording he did of it. I always thought that was the best version. And uh, 
Yeah, yeah there was a, quite, quite savage, wasn't it? There was a there was a version of that that was powerful. Um, no, yeah, there was a like, there was another live session somewhere I think as well, which was sludgier but cool. Yeah, uh, um, there was also a version we did with Nelly Hooper, which I don't know where it is. If anyone's got it, I'd love to like hear it because it sounded, from what I remember, uh, like I like the version we got. It sounds like it's very much encapsulate encapsulates that whole era and time because it was like the drums sound like recorded in a. In, in a military base or something in a barn I don't know so they're really it's just trashy sounding and quite trebly but um, I remember we Pete didn't turn up we went to, to Nelly Hooper's studio to do it and uh, or to either to do it or do overdubs or just make they wanted it to sound more radio friendly to be honest like more um, I don't know, smashing pumpkins or something I don't know just bigger drums and bigger guitars like you know Nirvana guitars but um, didn't end up happening but we did there is a version of it somewhere but um, I think Pete didn't want to do it because it would upset Mick, which is fair enough. So they replaced drums and all that kind of stuff. So I don't even know. My, my, I don't even know how it would sound now. But um, I remember at the time thinking it sounds really fucking powerful. But um, it sounded really different. Like, yeah. It sounds, no. yeah, it's interesting. Like who decides that becomes a single? Do you have like? The, do you reckon the band had uh, the ability to do that? Obviously, it's not going to be very radio friendly, as the lyrics mention at one point. <laughs> how that happened became single i think just it just was like general consensus that it was quite going to be the one kind of if that track had been done with nearly hooker it would sound so out of, so out, so out of base if it had gone like in uh in relation to the rest of the record anyway do you know what i mean it would sound like an anomaly because uh, the production would be so different but yeah who decided that i don't know it sort of happened i think it was like pretty obvious that that was going to be just a reaction it was getting yeah and then yeah adam told us a bit about the video which is quite funny yeah. um yeah. So that is after a big night out or something and then or a big gig and you have to go to some farm to film it in East London and then the funny interview with Simon Amstel as well. Yeah, and then it was I remember, yeah. It was I'm trying to remember. And and some of it was filmed in the um cinema on um in Dalston as well. To the Rio. No, what's that cinema on, on Dalston Kingsland on Kingsland Road. Yeah, Rio cinema, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I cut my hand just before that on a bottle. Oh god. Quite badly. Uh, I remember they're doing the video and they're like, what the fuck? Because it's really gashing, bleeding. I didn't really care, but I think they all freaked out. Um, yeah, I don't really remember much about I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Your reaction <laughs> in the um, the video of that interview is quite funny. I just found it quite funny, the whole awkwardness. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Looking back on that. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was odd. It was odd. <laughs> you can funny. tell it wasn't planned there because you're like, you can tell you just don't know what's going on. It's funny. Yeah, I'm just not used to doing that kind of stuff. I never liked that. Yeah, so yeah. It's sort of like, and, and you know, substance is involved in there. Like, I was just sounding really odd and weird and funny. So. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, we didn't discuss Pipe Down really. Like, another one. I don't, okay, yeah. that one. I remember just having this, like, I don't know, it's like a, B Tech fucking Pixies with that kind of, uh, that's what I thought of it at the time, but it's not, it's quite cool. Something like that. Just, just what it sounded like an intro. I, that, yeah. The idea of that was, it was just a throw, throwaway garage rock song, garage, like just like. Yeah, I think it's that. I haven't played these songs for years. And it was just to be a garage, just like a, and that's what it turned out like to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like a garage rock, just um, spin energy. It was a good one for live. Hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I'll be Pete. So I had the riff and the chords, and then obviously Pete came up with the lyrics because I wouldn't talk about myself like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do remember though that one in the verses. Uh, sorry, all that was worked out with me, Drew, and Peter. In sorry, not me, Drew, and Peter. Me, Drew, and Adam. The sort of like, I had the, I had the part, I had the, the, the progression or whatever, but sort of just just splitting it up to make it sound a bit more interesting, like uh, uh, a bit more mechanical, like the bass doing that, you know, just the arrangement basically. We spent the afternoon doing that. Then um, all these things were done pretty quick, man. And then uh, Pete, I remember, I think it was Pete's idea to to, to like, can you stick the Stooges riff in there? I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah, it works really well. That Love yeah, that. yeah, one of those things, man. Yeah. It was just yeah, so. It was just another one. So yeah, just playing it, playing around the guitar, and Pete just jumping on it, going, I like that, let's do that. Okay, so what you'd just be playing that riff around kind of thing. Yeah. And he would say it to every riff, but when one caught his ear, it'd be like, that's cool, let's do that. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I always remember that being a good live one. Yeah, it's good for live, man. It is. I mean, it was. Especially, yeah. So there's that. Um, yeah, lyrically, I guess it's all self-explanatory. It's, yeah. Don't get involved. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, the chorus of Piped On as well, like it's almost less is more kind of thing, isn't it? Is that kind of your vibe a little bit? On the guitars, you mean, on the vocals? Yeah, it's just like, I don't know, like, I guess one good thing about your playing is or about that time of Baby Shambles is, you know, there's a lot of bands just like hammering out chords, whereas you were like a bit more cleverer than that, I guess. Have a little bit of space in there kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I always play it different, like... like... There is a guitar solo in that song at the end, but it's mixed so low, you can hardly hear it. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, of the last, uh, and uh, it'd be easy to like double, double chuck, you know, double chat the guitars and make it all sound fat. But it's just thinking garage rock, do you know what I mean? Um, there is a that guitar solo is cool though. I remember doing that, and Drew was just like, we were just, I think we, they, they were recording. I was just chatting to Drew, just newly, newly, <laughs> just doing something or other. But was, the amp was fucking loud, and I uh, didn't really realize what we were doing. But anyway, it's there, but it's not really. It's very faint. It wasn't mixed. Yeah, I don't know why it is that faint. But um, Mick plays a little bit of guitar on that as well. Okay, all right. In the in the little breakdown bit. <laughs> Mick Jones, that was, he, that was his little idea. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was just, a, that's another thing. That, that, that version of that song, all those versions that ended up on that record was just how it sounded that day. It could have been faster if we did it the day before. It could, have been, it could have been more ferocious, could have been less ferocious. It just was a... Do you know what I mean? They're not necessarily the best versions, but it is what it is. And yeah, with melody then, was it always down to Pete the melody, or would you come in with a bit of an idea sometimes? Pretty much it was um, like, song like uh, Eight Dead Boys, that was the chorus and the verses were like, it was my melody. Song like, that was Pete on Pipe Down. It's mostly Peter, and unless there was something, if I had a riff and I had like, um, for example, um, let me think about this for a second, like a loyalty song, it was like, Da, 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 da. That would be enough to then he would just take it and uh, and then then he would just write his words around it and so just take the melody and do sing and make a melody out of it, make a song out of it. So yeah, pretty much I say I'm trying to remember, man. And this yeah, pretty, pretty much that was his thing, yeah. 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 Yes. We anyway, we do a little bit of tighten up and um, a little bit of uh, back and forth of it as well. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to mention loyalty song. Is there any? I guess you've already covered it, really. But is there anything else to that song that you can I've think of? Uh, I just remember having like a that was just just some simple chords. It was just was it G, D, and C? Played it for, played it for quite a while, and then the, uh, and I have a memory, this is one of those fragmented memories of being on the beach in Brighton with a whole bunch of us and playing that. And that's when he started singing. I think I said, what did I, what did I dream? And they, uh, I can't, I, uh, anyway, my memory is, I can't remember, man. My memory is, I can't remember. <laughs> I, was, I remember that we were on tour and there's three other bands with us and we, when we were, I think Luca was there and uh, this, and we were on the beach in Brighton. That's when I, I think that song came together, the majority of it. Yeah. I was just okay, playing guitar and Pete was singing uh, the middle bit Peter wrote which was I never learned to play it because I, I didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> I like it I think but at the time I don't like that bit yeah yeah um, that's one that's a nice memory if it's if it's, if it's a real memory <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry up the morning just because I touched on that one quickly I remember that yeah, was yeah. Quite, looking back I don't think at the time that was quite a bleak, bleak scene I was in this flat in Ponder's End and Pete was staying with me for a bit because it was chaotic for him. And, I don't know. Just wanted to get wanted to get away, so I came to my chaotic place instead. And then, um, and I had that. I can't remember how to play it. I remember just playing and whatever it was, and the rest of it. It's another one of those things. This was about bit, uh, when you've been out for two or three days, you're cranky and weird. And uh, that was, I really like that song. To be honest with you, man, I, I think that song's quite beautiful. I think it was. Um, I remember when we did that, he got his tape recorder out and press record. It was actually, yeah, it actually took cassettes. And we we were just, we worked quite a bit on that one. And he would duck out to get to Greg's to get get like pasties and milkshakes. <laughs> really, yeah. And uh, I do remember that um, 
there's a lyric in that tune where because he was it was yeah I don't know I shouldn't really say that oh he went right it was like basically I was at, um we were there and we were obviously there was fucking not cane going on and he was he, he squirts his blood on the ceiling I was like what are you doing man I'm like don't fucking I got really angry I was like don't do that like I probably have to sort out the landlord for that I knew the landlord <laughs> And you put the lyric in the song. There's a lyric about that in the song where you say, blood on the ceiling, not to the landlord's taste or something like that. <laughs> but I was really pissed off, man. I'll be honest. I thought that was really fucking rude. But I forgive him now. Yeah, it's not something that you'd usually hear about doing this one else's flat, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah, like, we, we did mention it before, but like the turnaround on coming up with these songs and playing them live, would that be the same day sometimes kind of thing? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I have, yeah, potentially. I can't say definitely, but potentially. I remember, like, there'd be gigs sometimes. We had no gigs planned for the day, and there'd be, like, especially in the early days, if you go and do a gig, then it just there'd be venues ready to, to take us play, to play, and we might have just been playing that morning or or had some stuff together. Yeah, we would do that sometimes. I think I think, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. I spoke to, um, just had this idea about trying to cover some of the, maybe the, I don't know about if, if underrated is the right term, but I spoke to Gemma about um, I Want to Break Your Heart, the one with Dot Allison. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. She said that the time she played in Manchester, that was the first time she'd actually ever played it. Oh, that, that's true. Yeah. yeah that, so that kind of stuff happened a lot. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, that is true. And then I kind of slightly give me a hump, but it was part of the fun as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, he would do that. And, and you know, the song didn't just get his guitar and start playing a song. You just sort of have to find your feet with it. Yeah, yeah. Part, part of the charm of it all, I guess, looking back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, then the Eight Dead Boys, and so you, you said you had that mostly written. Like, at what point yeah. did you write that? A couple of years before, I think. Ah, okay. It's weird when people say, I wrote this, I write. I never really understood when people say, I guess it's just a, I, I get hung up on the words. Like, what do you sit down? <laughs> yeah. I, sit down I just start playing some guitar and, and just saying some words. And I guess that's what they mean by right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, I had this idea not about phrases, but, but that riff at the beginning, I think it was Peter. That's how it goes. I think that was Peter. And that, that's quite savage because that chord's weird. This one. I think that's the chord. It was just a, so kind of like a B69 or something. I don't know what it is, but it, it was a. Uh, quite weird to hear that played with a jazz master and a fucking martial really loud sounds savvy <laughs> so yeah that 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 sort of bolt on was really good and uh yeah i think with that one um peter just like the words in the in the he had his own bit to it he added the, that middle bit uh friend of mine bit is his yeah I'm at, in his in his book he talked about that's quite interesting yeah he said in the book i haven't read it he said those lyrics were about Carl, basically. Yeah, when it's when it suits you, you're a friend of mine. I thought it was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really went hearing that. We were live. He used to scream. He used to really holler that. It was great. Um, what was the rest of the lyrics are yours? Is it? Uh, me think the chorus is mine. My friend, uh, think, yeah, I think so. The chorus and the verses, yeah. Ah, cool. Uh, maybe he, we ch- change a word here or two in the verses. That's it. So, what's it about from your point of view then? I don't know. Just, <laughs> just sounded good. Yeah, I don't know. It obviously means something, but I never really analyzed stuff like that. I sort of get it out and move on. I said, I don't know. Uh, it's not like it doesn't mean anything, because it definitely made me feel something when I play it and I hear it. I think, yeah. the, I think um, being lonely, I guess, not in a typical sense, but um, isolating yourself, maybe. Like you look better now, from, you'd be, look better from afar. It's like, being around people, because before I met Pete, I was quite ill anyway, like with drug, four shambles and that stuff. I had my periods of drug addiction and that. And it was, I remember getting to the point where people just started getting hung with you, man. They, they started losing <laughs> patience. Like, and uh, just for, but they'd be like, hey, how are you doing? But they were quite standoffish as well. Like, don't get too close. Like, you look, I care about you, but stay over there. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. All the shit, all, all, all the fuckery that goes on with it, all, all that drug addiction and, and the emotional draining and just the lying and all the bollocks. Uh, so, yeah, does that make sense? Uh? No, yeah, definitely, yeah. Because, um, no, I write songs, obviously, just to my own amusement, but with lyrics, I, I think sometimes 
you can like add meaning to them afterwards because when they come out they don't mean an awful lot it's like kind of yeah you can almost shape it afterwards to mean something i guess yeah you analyze it after but just get it off your chest yeah i guess it's a similar vibe in the verses as well i can't even remember the lyrics in the second verse maybe no how that second verse was all peter's that's that's fair enough that's uh definitely true because i'm trying to remember the song now yeah that's that's so yeah the second the second verse lyrics of peter's definitely and i always remember like in the line the life that you wanted wasn't in store is that one of yours yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a really good line that it was actually the light okay right but you could think of it like that as well I guess it's got a deeper meaning, but the actual meaning was like, I guess, you know, the light you wanted wasn't it? So like uh, the life, yeah, it could be the same thing as the life you wanted, but but like, the ch- um, let me think that is how to word this. The light, um, yeah, you might have to edit this, I have to think for it. <laughs> well, it's like the thing that you're striving for kind of thing. Yeah. The, the good stuff, like uh, the happiness or whatever, or like being healthy or happiness. And I like, literally, like at the time, it was really, I had, I, I, it was almost like going to a B&Q shop in my head and being like, that light, it was like, just took it really literally. So he wanted a, not, not that I particularly ever went there and wanted a particular light, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like, no, we don't have it. We don't have what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I always loved that. I thought it was great. Um... Maybe Pete sang it like life. The life that you want it's the same same kind of thing i guess it can mean the same thing yeah i mean according to google it's life but i mean you wrote the song so <laughs> yeah 32nd of december like Gemma was t- telling us about when you played that live i think on xfm and he'd only just start he'd only just come up with it i think and uh I ended up playing it for about eight minutes just in a loop really yeah yeah maybe i don't really remember that i do remember was that on xfm they gave us one of those weird pod things to play through which was odd i'm playing with headphones uh, it felt really weird you know like, no amps and, you know i think that was the first time i'd done that okay like say so plugged into like a like a unit and then headphones but um yeah see that's a tune i don't really remember much about um how it came but yeah i, I, I think she's right in saying we did i hadn't you know, played it once or twice before going to record it maybe just that day yeah yeah um eight dead boys as well was that a good one to play live did you enjoy that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so I think it went came across better live than it does on a, on a, on a record. I do. Mm. Yeah, people like that one live. It is ass, yeah. It's that savage one to start with. I mean, it's quite a generic riff. It's just the way it's played is quite mangled. Mm. So, like, yeah, it's just like playing a bit off, playing it a little bit off. Um, just like, yeah, it was good to play live.